everybody this is dream and today we have a four game slate on DraftKings and a five game slate on spandle keep in mind the DraftKings slate starts at 8 p.m and the FanDuel slate starts at 6 p.m because it includes the new york and toronto game so do keep that in mind for the games though for the uh draft kings here i have denver over oklahoma city i have memphis over phoenix i have brooklyn over the warriors and i have the uh, portland trailblazers over the lakers so uh, with that said, guys, let's get into the injury report today. We have a pretty extensive injury report for such a small slate. For the Thunder, Pokoveski is out and JRE is out. For the Nuggets, Murray, Jokic, and Highland are all questionable. That is obviously going to make a huge difference based on who ends up playing there. For the Suns, Booker and Payne are out. Shemette, Paul, and Aiton are all questionable. And Cam Johnson is probable. All of that is going to make a huge difference based on how we're going to do our lineups today. Thankfully, both those two teams that I just mentioned that have lots of guys questionable are in the first two games on the DraftKings slate, so we won't have to worry too much because uh, we should get the information before the slate locks. For the Nets, Durant is out. For the Warriors, Wiseman is out. For the Lakers, uh, Davis, Walker, and Reeves is out, and LeBron is questionable. And for the Trailblazers, Winslow is out. So obviously, if LeBron was to miss, that would definitely change some things as well. So let's go ahead and get into the guys I do like so far. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm going to go ahead and say this on both sites. There's this not a lot of value right now. Hopefully some opens up based on the information we get about Phoenix and Denver. But at this point in time, there's really not a lot of information uh, that's giving us a lot of value plays on this particular slate. It's actually quite hard to find some really good value. Uh, but I do think that in Phoenix especially, there'll be likely more in value there. And maybe off... Maybe also in Denver. So let's go ahead and get into the players. Uh, first year for our DraftKings, we're going to start with our guards, and we're going to look at Damian Lillard. Um, one thing about Lillard is that he's been playing really well lately. He's had some really good games. His price has obviously come up some, uh, but he's really viable here. He's been playing really well, and he's got a nice plus matchup here against the Lakers, who don't have anybody that can really stop him. Um, then Desmond Bain for Memphis. Um... He's been pretty consistent lately, getting over 30 fantasy points in most games. Uh, he's been inconsistent throughout the season, but he's been better now. And while his price had popped up to over 7,500, it's back down to around 7,000. And at this price point, and with the way he's been playing, I think he's in a very good spot. Uh, and Memphis is at full strength, which actually seems to benefit him some as well. Uh, Jamal Murray, also very interesting today. I do think he's likely to play, but uh, just based on the information I've seen so far... But he is questionable, so do keep, consider that, you know, you know, keep that in mind here. But he has nice upside at his price. He's just way too cheap for what his potential is, the way he's been playing lately, etc. Uh, so he's a top option uh, if he ends up playing. Uh, Kyrie Irving has been really streaky lately. Uh, since uh, Durant has been out, he's had some bad games. But he's also had some really ex crazy games, including in the last two. He's been playing really, really good. Um, I expect that to continue here in a plus matchup against Golden State. Then we're going to get into the forwards, and we're going to start with Aaron Gordon for Denver. Now, the issue with him is that he has a high uh, ceiling and a very low floor, so he can get under 20 fantasy points sometimes, as he did two games ago, and it's really inconsistent, but, you know, he's still viable here because he has such a high ceiling, especially on a small slate like this. Uh, he has more upside as a result of this situation as well because Oklahoma City really doesn't play defense. I expect this game to be pretty high-scoring, and he should be able to take advantage of that. Uh, just keep in mind that he has ups and downs. Uh, Clay Thompson, also very interesting today. Assuming all the Warriors play, which right now it doesn't show anybody being out or questionable even. Uh, of course, that could change throughout the day. Uh, but uh, overall, his price has come down some. And he's been pretty good lately. His price is fair enough that we can uh, take a shot at him here on this particular small slate. Uh, Mikel Bridges, also somebody I don't particularly think looks like he's in a great spot unless all these guys are out for Phoenix but he's been playing really good in the last four games uh and if those guys end up being out again then I'm going to keep looking at him as a good option here uh obviously he has a bit of a lower floor than we'd like but he has a high ceiling as well and so I think he's viable on the slate then we'll look at centers here and Joker obviously you know he's a walking triple double uh the question here is that is he going to play uh, and if he does, then he'll be somebody I'm going to take into consideration, especially in the matchup. But uh, do keep in mind that he is questionable. But I still think he ends up playing. 
but at this point, but you know that can change. And then Nicholas Claxton, uh, he's been playing really solid since Durant's been out. Uh, his price point has come up a little bit, but he's still viable here. Uh, he has good upside, and uh, he's been playing solid. And this is a good game for him, considering Golden State, does, they tend to play smaller ball. And I still expect him to play the uh, max amount of minutes as a result. Uh, with that said, that's what I have here for DraftKings. Let's get over to FanDuel. Now, like I told you, FanDuel has this uh, New York-Toronto game, which actually does seem to help a little bit on the slate because it gives you a little bit more options, but there's still not a whole lot of value at this point. You know, we're still going to have to wait on that Phoenix and Denver news, which isn't going to be as ideal here on FanDuel. I don't like FanDuel either because today because the prices are higher for most of these guys. Uh, makes them a little bit less uh, useful. Uh, but there's still some good value options here, so let's go get into those. Uh, first, we're going to start with uh, Lillard. Uh, while his price has popped up some, He's still viable here. He's had uh, five really good games in a row, and he has nice upside. And he, d even though he has, you know, five straight games over 50 fantasy points, he still has a little bit of risk. But I expect this is a plus matchup for him against the Lakers, and I don't have, any, I don't see any reason to dislike him today. Uh, Shea Alexander also really interesting here on FanDuel. Um, he has had some ups and downs lately, uh, and he hasn't really been meeting the expectation of his salary. But he does have the upside, and it is a plus matchup for him against Denver, especially if they have some guys out. I think he'd be more useful if Murray ends up being ruled out, uh, but I do think he's somebody to take in consideration, and he's a good alternative to Lillard. Uh, then we'll look at Ky uh, Kyrie Irving, who's had some absolutely massive games the last two games. Uh, now, do keep in mind that it's a little bit risky because uh, he's had some really bad games as well lately, uh, but he's a, you know he's a streaky player, so that's what we expect from Kyrie but with uh, Durant out, he's going to have to put up big numbers to give them chances to win. Uh, then we'll look at Jalen Brunson uh, for the Knicks. Now, he's one of the few players who's been reasonably consistent. And I say reasonably because he is a little bit up and down. But he has a high ceiling, and uh, you know his price has come up some. But he's still viable here in a plus matchup against Toronto. Uh, then we'll look at Mikel Bridges. Uh, who's actually uh, a little bit more expensive on FanDuel, but he's one of the better options at the in the forwards uh, in position where he has uh, been really good the last four games. And so I think he's got some nice upside here, especially if all those guys get ruled out for, Mikkel, for the Suns. Rather. Uh, then uh, Desmond Bain, he's probably one of my favorite plays on uh, this slate, just purely based on his... Uh, play since everybody's been fully back for Memphis. I look for him to continue to play a good solid about 30 minutes a game and have some good upside as well. He's been doing really good in the peripheral stats, which is really beneficial to him as well. Uh, then we'll look at Clay Thompson. Uh, now it looks like the Warriors are all back, but I mean, you know, it's a little too early to tell probably. Uh, and, you know, he doesn't play some of these games, so we'll have to see for certain. But he has some upside here. Uh, he's not as ideal as some of the other plays, and he's a lot more expensive here on uh, than I'd like him to be, really. But uh, he has upside, just the same, and he looks like a pretty decent play on this one. Um, Pascal Siakam, also very interesting today. I, I really think he's a viable slate option, though he has had a low f uh, uh, floor lately in the mid-30s, which is not ideal. Uh, but he has upside in this matchup, and so I think he's viable here. I feel like him and uh, Julius Randle might end up going back and forth. And then, of course, I'm going to mention Julius Randle here because he's just been absolutely great uh, for several weeks. Now, he's had a couple off games recently, but he still had some big games as well. And his price has actually dropped a little bit. Um, <clears throat> but with Mitchell Robinson out, he's going to have to take over even more of uh, the offense uh, and rebounding situation. So I think he's in a great spot and should be able to dominate in this game. Um, and then Aaron Gordon. You now Aaron Gordon's like the most annoying player because he has a high ceiling and he has a low floor. And when you you know with that, you have to deal with some bad games, really bad games sometimes. So he can really mess your lineup up if you use him and he has a floor game. But in a shorter slate, he's somebody you have to consider, especially at his price point today in the plus match against Oklahoma City. So with that said, guys, thank you for liking, commenting, and subscribing. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave them below, and have a nice day, guys.